there's a pe how, how do you get the fans optimistic about this game, given the results we've seen and the fact that this morning we've learned about more playoff, um, more and more, more players pulling out. There's a bit of negativity again around about the score. What, what, how do we get enthused by this? Well, I think it's it's two games um, that, as a squad and as a as a nation, we're we're hopefully excited about. And yeah, okay, there's been a couple of call-offs, but there's nothing we can do about about genuine injuries. And um, a couple of the boys have obviously came to be assessed, and the injuries clear there, and they've had to they've had to go home. But I think we've got two playoff games to look forward to in March, and I think the the, the kind of the generation of um, players that are playing here are, are are desperate to do everything they can to to get to the Euros. Um, and these two games can be pivotal for us in terms of building momentum for for day two for day two games. So that's I think we don't need to look any further than that. That we've got two two games against um, two sides that we feel if we are our best that we can win the two games. Um, so that's an exciting couple of games for us and an exciting opportunity for a group of boys to go and put in um, a performance that that really gets everybody back on side and and feeling good about ourselves again. After the difficulties that Scotland have had in this group, do you almost see this as a fresh start this week? Um, a little bit, I think. Uh, I think, albeit San Marino was a game that you know we we we, we know we, we should win. Uh, we still had to do that, and we still had to go and put on a you know a kind of convincing performance, and we and we done that. So I think we try and call upon that bit of confidence that we took for that to to then go into these two games, and if we can do our job properly in the next two games, and I think that puts us in a in a decent place, and and hopefully given a uh, kind of bit of positivity and bit of confidence to everybody pushing on to to March. With Scott. Being back in the squad, the, the two of you know each other so well. Do you see the opportunity to nail down a permanent centre back partnership now, starting with this double header? Well, if fifty two is selected to play, then then yeah, I think we hopefully we we can use the fact that we we know each other well on and off the pitch to, and we can hopefully complement each other um, to give a kind of good foundation there to, to the team. But I think. Um, Look, it would be silly to look ahead to, to the games in March. There's a lot of football, a lot of club football to play between then and now and uh, opportunity for change. So um, if we're given the opportunity to play, then, then I'm sure the two is, well, you know, we're confident that we can that we can get the job done. And, and uh, as I say, there's a familiarity there uh, with a partnership that, that's kind of grown since the start of last season. And at times not the opportunities to play together as, as much as we would like to due to injury and other reasons. But um, no, I'll be excited about that opportunity to play together. You know, we, we run together and... We're close and we talk and we spend a lot of time, so um, I'm, I'm excited about the prospect of that. On the other hand, though, Michael, is there an idea that you need to be selfish and make sure you pin down your position in the, in the team, regardless of who else is playing beside you? Well, yeah, I think, um, albeit I played the last two games, I think when you come back, there's you don't nobody's got the right to assume that they'll be in the team, so we've got a big training week ahead of us and I've got to make sure I do my own job first and that's train hard and train well um, and you know try and show the manager that he can trust me if, if he decides to, to pick us to go and play in, in the first game. And, um, as I said, then, you're right, that if, if that then means going and playing beside Big Scott, if he's the other centre-back selected, then, then brilliant. Um, but I think uh, that, that familiarity that we've got can, can hopefully stand us in good stead. But there's other good players here. Big Deck, he's a good player and has been, been brilliant all season for Motherwell. So whatever centre-back is picked to go and play in the game or whatever two centre-backs are picked to go and play in the game, then um, I'm, I'm sure we'll do fine. Has injuries just underpinned this whole campaign? A little bit. I think um, I think we've, we've been quite lucky in the sense that I, I believe since the manager took over, there's been a kind of nucleus of a squad that's that's been there through his um, his previous squads, and he's slowly but surely getting that that message across to, to us all. I think we're all very familiar with what he's asking us to do and an understanding of that. So um, yeah, there's players come and go, but that's international football. There's, there's nothing we can do. That. Everybody's desperate to be here, desperate to succeed, and desperate to get this country to to you know a major final. So um, as I said earlier, we've got these two games to prepare for, ultimately two games to get us there. So, what an exciting time for, for us all to, to, to try and be part of that and try and be successful. There's so much said about the manager on the way he worked at Kilmarnock as well, didn't he? Having time in the training field and just drilling in his system, his methods. Obviously, he doesn't get that sort of same licence with the national team. But is that the importance of these games? You said there that the more you guys can work together and get your head around what the manager's looking for, the more beneficial it will be to the team yeah absolutely I think that's you know in comparison with what probably a club manager gets you, you look at the um, up until the last couple of games the manager probably had two two weeks um, and, and two week blocks to, to work with a squad um, and in pre-season alone a club manager would have far more than that to work with his, to work with his squad so 
Um, I think that, that you know we need to recognise that there is a limited amount of time, but I think that's where we're very lucky that we've got a, a top manager who can get his message across and um, is eloquent and, and and very very direct in what he wants. So um, I think we're, we're lucky in that sense, and the players will just continue to work under them. The more time we get, the more squads there are. Hopefully, we'll see improvement, and um, the players need to you know take responsibility for for what's a clear message we put across to hopefully go and get the results in the pitch. It's tough as our job right now, man management, just in terms of keeping spirits high, because it has been a sort of a grueling campaign. It's, it's not really meant every. Um, I'm not so sure about that. I think every time we we, we come here, we're we're really excited about the opportunities that lie ahead and the, the couple of games that we've got coming up. So. I think the manager is, is is trying to get across really, as I said, what what he's what he's wanting from us and his principles of play. Um, and as I say, I, think, I believe we're picking that up and, and we're getting there. And albeit the results have not always been what we would want, um, but, but we're making you know slow steps towards that. And these two games are can hopefully be massive for us in terms of building that momentum and really getting the confidence up and getting the country back behind us. Um, it has been an indifferent campaign. There's no getting away for that. But ultimately, as I said, I think we've got to remember that. You know, in March we've got two games to get us where we all want to be. So, um, we're as, as we're in as good a position as we've probably been in in, in recent years, and I think we've got to remember that.